Hey guys, Dr. Josh Axe here, hanging out with Jordan Rubin, and uh, today we're going to talk about omegas, how important they are, and Jordan, I know that uh, you and I both eat a lot of omegas. In fact, the first time I ever went to visit Jordan at his house in West Palm Beach, you ate you me eating? out of Omega and Home. Well, I did eat you out of Omega and Home. But the other thing was, you made this big thing of salmon ceviche, you know, that you'd flown in from, or you, uh, I know it was Alaskan salmon, and you soaked it in lemon juice, and the whole thing. And so, I know you and I both get a lot of Omegas in our diet, but today we want to talk about how you can get more Omegas in your diet, both with food, we'll talk a little about supplements, we'll get into essential oils, that type of thing too. But um, let's, let's talk about Omegas. Absolutely. Well, you well. mentioned salmon, and I think... If you ask the average person, first of all, what omega fatty acids are, they will think about salmon. Because if you want to know yeah. what the number one source of omega fatty acids in the related nutrients and compounds, sockeye salmon. And why sockeye? Because it's very red, it's wild, and it's got antioxidants and vitamins along with omegas. So omegas are great, but when you get omegas from food, you're always getting a combination of you would say complementary ingredients. I know I read something years ago that talked about what are the most recommended supplements in all of America. And somewhere near that top of the list where Ome an omega supplement was one of the most recommended supplements overall by doctors. And so let's talk about that too because you know you and I both love ancient, you know, ancient uh, ancient nutrition, ancient just things that were done like TCM, ancient Ayurveda, looking at what our ancestors did to be healthy. So let's talk about that today. Like looking at the diet of what we eat today versus what our ancestors ate, what do you think the difference is in terms of the omega consumption overall? Well, I think it's flip-flopped or backwards. So we hear a lot about omega-3s, but omega-3s are only one group of essential fatty acids. That's right. Yeah. And by the way, what makes them essential? You, you quote these lines and people say, oh, it's an essential fatty acid, it's an EFA, but what makes it essential? It's pretty simple. You don't make it in your body. Yeah. So you need to eat foods or take supplements that contain these essential fatty acids. Omega-3 is essential and omega-6 is essential, but omega-6 is something we get too much of in America. Why? Mm -hmm. Grains, refined grain oils, etc. And while omega-6s are essential, we get too much of them and they push the body out of balance. It's all about balance with omegas. Yeah. yeah, so the big thing you wanna know is, and you've probably heard this before, you wanna have a balance of omega-3 and omega-6 fats. Now, I've seen some studies saying a four to one ratio, I've seen a one to one ratio, but the truth is, you should have a fairly close balance of these type of fats. I remember reading the average American ratio is 25 to one, is, which yes. is gonna cause major issues within the body of inflammation, that type of thing, if your omega levels are completely off. So you really wanna make sure for most people, we should be getting more of these omega-3s in our diet. And so Jordan, just from a dietary standpoint, what are some of the highest omega foods, or let's talk about specifically the highest omega-3 foods since that's what we really need. Well, first of all, there are two main sources of omega-3s. There's plant source, which is usually found in nuts and seeds. Yeah. Certain plants, such as perilla, which is a like a mint, and then there's animal-based, or primarily from fish. Now, here's an interesting fact. It isn't as much plant and animal because eggs actually contain ALA, which is found in chia and flax. Kind of confusing, but think of it this way. Think of fish source omegas and all other omega sources. Yeah. So the others include chia, flax, pumpkin seed, hemp seed, etc. whereas wild fish is by far the best source of the omega-3 fats, EPA and DHA. So when you think omega-3s, the most prevalent are ALA, alpha-linolenic acids, flax and chia, walnuts, or EPA and DHA, which is from fish. So we're talking salmon, sardines, mackerel, herring, anything that's fatty. Mm. So cod's not gonna have a lot. Yeah. Uh, any of the uh, whitefish, snapper, mahi-mahi, that's not gonna have a lot of omega-3s, but salmon, mackerel, herring, sardines are a great effective way to get omega-3s. They're affordable and they will ruin most relationships <laughs> due to their sheer odor. You, you know, just as a side note, Chelsea, I, you know, Chelsea, um, doesn't love to smell salmon. Now she eats almost all other fish in large amounts. I mean, you know, we go down to Florida, we have, you know, down to Seaside and we eat a lot of grouper, a lot of snapper. Um, you know, when we started dating, I would make these salmon cakes, salmon patties, and she would just, you know, she doesn't love it. So, but I love it. And then another thing I started doing for a while is making mackerel for breakfast. And my dogs, Flash and Oakley, think it's literally the greatest part of their life because of I'll course. give them a little bit. Oh yeah. And uh, 
Anyway, so, so that being said, so talk to us, what's the difference between the type of omega-3 fats? We have, ET, we have EPA, DHA, ALA, but then also talk about ETA, because that's a really unique omega that people aren't getting. Absolutely, so ETA, and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it because it's like ecto triechanol, well, it's some kind yeah. of Star Trek word, but ETA is not just what you text someone when you're wondering how late they're gonna be to either a phone call or a meeting. It is an omega-3 fat that was discovered in green-lipped mussel found in New Zealand. Yeah. But for those of us who don't eat shellfish, you can find it in fish roe, caviar, fish eggs. Yeah. So it's not just <clears throat> something premium uh, at fancy restaurants. Caviar or fish roe contains ETA, which is found to be amazing for your whole body health. And so if you're gonna consume omegas, ALA, eat some chia, some flax, some walnuts, some hemp. You can also get ALA from grass-fed beef, pastured poultry, and yeah. eggs. They all contain the ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, good for you. DHA and EPA is called preformed omega-3s, which work directly. So when you hear about an omega-3 supplement, you hear about fish oil, you're getting EPA and DHA. But then I think consuming ETA, either in your diet or supplements, brings great balance. And then you have to look at what else do you find in foods that are rich in omega-3s because flaxseed and chia have a lot in common with salmon. You might think, well, one's a plant source, one's an animal, but they don't just contain omega oils, they contain other nutrients, including mm. antioxidants. Yeah. So when you consume an omega-3, omega-6 food source, you're getting all these antioxidants, you're getting beneficial nutrients. So if you're gonna supplement Taking an isolated EPA and DHA is good, but I would recommend finding a source of antioxidants. And we talk about astaxanthin, also difficult to spell and pronounce, being in wild salmon. So when I look for an omega-3 supplement, I wanna see astaxanthin, yeah. I wanna see ETA, and I like seeing various antioxidants from herbs and spices. It's about, getting this overall balance, because again, you don't find in any food an omega-3 on its own. It's always combined with, call it food factors, yeah. right? And that's why we say food is primary, supplements are to round out a diet that is missing certain key nutrients. You, you mentioned I flew in salmon from wherever. I used to get fish roe directly from Alaska because it was hard to find. Yeah. I went to great lengths to get these food factors, but now, I'm able to find supplements that will contain the omega-3s from plant and animal, that'll contain astaxanthin and various antioxidants. That's sort of a twofer, if you will. Totally, so you know, one, one of the things we talked about, so two big ways you wanna be getting omega-3s in your diet, and the way that I know both you and I do, my family does, one is food, okay? So if you can, do your best, three servings of wild-caught fish a week for most people. You know, whether it's, again, salmon is great, and you can do salmon grilled and put it on a salad. You can do it, um, you know, use salmon patties. That's the other thing, like even shopping on a budget, buying canned salmon yes. is a great way to get sockeye wild salmon on a budget. But you see, um, I gotta interrupt you, though. That's yeah. one of the healthiest foods in a conventional grocery store yeah. and the most affordable is canned. There's no canned farmed salmon at this point. It's yeah. all wild, pretty awesome. Yeah, it's great. So again, you wanna get those three servings a week. In addition to that, especially days you're not consuming wild caught fish, you wanna look at getting an omega supplement and just not any omega supplement. You wanna look for something that has what Jordan talked about, all of the different types of omegas, the EPA, the DHA, the ALA, and then maybe the most powerful, or one of the most powerful omegas, that ETA, which is really unique and hard to find. And again, this can be great for naturally supporting your joints, for brain, your just your whole body, and, and a healthy infl inflammatory response by the body too. So again, I think omegas are really important, one of the most important things that all of us need to be getting both in food and supplements on a regular basis. And someone has asked, and will ask every time we talk about omegas, who should consume omegas, everybody. When I made infant formulas for my children, and I have adopted children, I would make sure they had cod liver oil, which yeah. was EPA, DHA, and I made sure they had some ALA because breast milk has all of that. The elderly do phenomenally well when they consume omega-3s because it helps lubricate the joints, yeah. mobility, flexibility, and the number one reason people take omegas and they're recommended, supporting cardiovascular health, which clearly is a major concern for everybody, especially people as they age. Yeah, so hey guys, hope you've enjoyed this video, us talking about the benefits of omega-3s.